So uh, as Bernie said, I'm Stephanie G. I'm the Marketing Director for Randolph Communications. So thank you so much for allowing uh, us to be here tonight to share, let you know uh, who, are, who we are um, and what we do and if fiber is available to you. Um, I've got Shad Brady here with me as well. He's our construction supervisor. So if there's any questions about putting that fiber in, then Chad's the man that can help answer that. Um, let me see if I can do this right. So I thought I'd start off with telling you about who we are. So you hear, you know the names of the big providers, Spectrum, and CenturyLink, and some of those, but it's like Randolph Communications. And there's a lot in the name. So we are in Randolph County, but we serve parts at eight different counties. Um, we are a telephone membership cooperative, a nonprofit, and we were formed in 1954 when the larger telephone companies would not provide telephone service to rural areas, just like it's the cooperative way. A lot of pet folks formed uh, together and Randolph Chatham and Moore counties, um, and that's how Randolph Telephone Membership Corporation was founded. We've got a lot through our history. I'm um, just going to hit some of those highlights. On, in 1957 is when the first telephone call was made from the Grange Hall and Farmer. And if anybody remembers the party line back then, we've come a long way since then. So um, 1985, we began the first steps in constructing our fiber network. Uh, to create our fiber ring that to, to our exchanges to transport the traffic. And in 96, we introduced dial-up Internet uh, to services to, our, to all of our members, co-op members. In 2001, we began inter offering high-speed Internet, and from there we have a lot of other services that we offer as well. In 2011, we really put the plows into high gear. Um, that's when I came to Randolph. And our goal was to get fiber to every cooperative member. Um, and right now, we are pleased to say that we are 90% um, uh, towards that goal as of the fall of 2021. So uh, we are very proud of that. It's, it's taken a long way. It's a multi, multi-million dollar project. Uh, Open Broadband knows how expensive it is as well. And if you talk to anybody, putting fiber in the ground is, is not um, inexpensive. It is expensive to do, but um, it's a reliable source as well. Um, to meet the growing demand of our non-members to have our services, we began operating in 2014 as a CLEC. So our member area is called, is what you call an ILEC. A CLEC is a common local exchange carrier. So we were allowed to offer our services outside of our member co-op boundary. That's why there's a lot of folks um, in Chatham County that have been able to take advantage of our services because we don't operate just inside of our co-op boundary now. And those boundaries were set many years ago and they will not change. Now we can legally operate as a CLEC and uh, offer it to other customers as well. You won't be a member, but you can still enjoy those same type of services that our members enjoy. Um, our, C, our CLEC right now covers 137 square miles. Our ILEC is about 534 square miles. Uh, and the CLEC area, that's the area that grows, so we continue to grow uh, each and every year. Um, it's no secret, as we all know, that everything that we touch revolves around the Internet. Um, as you talked about earlier, it's a necessity. It was great to have, but now, especially COVID has shown us that you've got to have the Internet to work, for your kids to do schoolwork, um, to play, whatever you want to do. Internet is reliable because so many folks are now doing away with their home telephone. Get reliable Internet source, and you have Wi-Fi calling. You can do a lot of other things if you don't have um, the mobile service there. In 2015, as I said, when we were founded, we're Randolph Telephone Membership Corporation. But in 2015, I think Bernie and I were talking about earlier, I wanted folks to know who we were because you'll hear a, different couple, a couple different names go out there. But we started doing business as Randolph Communications in 2015. We're always going to be Randolph Telephone Membership Corporation. But when you say telephone, folks would say, well, you don't offer Internet. Well, yeah, we've been offering Internet for a lot of years. So a lot of uh, providers have been transitioning to their names to help better define what they're doing. Um, we also moved from Old Cox Road that's right there at the zoo in Ashburn, if you know where that is. We're now headquartered right there on Dixie Drive across from Walker Shoes. That helps give a landmark to that. That's our headquarters. We also have another location in Liberty, uh, North Carolina as well. Um, but our successes and everything that we do at Randolph is only as good as our employees that we have. Uh, we're a family. We are a lean company. We have 63 employees. 
um, to operate and to do what we do to cover all of the territory. Uh, and we service parts of eight different counties. So what services do we offer? Um, well, for over half a century, we've been providing exceptional telecommunications services at an affordable rate. Um, we offer services today through fiber. That's what we do. We still have a copper plant. That's in our member area. Our CLEC area is 100% fiber. Um, but we're trying to transition, work from that 90% to get to that 100%. Um, we offer um, high-speed Internet up to one gig by gig symmetrical. We're proud to say that just recently, actually January the 1st, we transitioned all of our existing customers. The lowest speed that our fiber customers will have is 100 by 100. Uh, we have a 500 by 500, and then we have a gig by gig. So um, we did that free of charge to our customers and actually dropped the prices on our two larger ones because we understand that it's, it's a need. The Internet is just is a need. Um, we have bundles. We have Internet only. Uh, we have no data caps as well. We have telephone, as we said. That's how we started, and we always will, even though there's a lot of folks that's transitioning away from that. Um, long distance, we offer home security. We started offering that several years ago. Uh, so we have a home security product for residential. Um, we do computer services. We have business networking where we can take care. Um, cybersecurity is big, big topic right now. So that is where we have a lot of training, monthly training with our own employees. So that's something else I'd like to stress to you guys besides everybody's wanting to use the Internet. Don't just click on a link that you get about even if you say, hey, if you click here, we can bring you Internet. You need to make sure it's from a reliable source. Cybersecurity is big. Um, we have phone systems. We offer wireless. We are uh, powered through Verizon, but we work through a third party for our wireless services. We do website design and hosting. We have a camera surveillance system. We have a Notify Plus that's basically like a call tree. If you've got them from churches or different organizations, you can set that up so you can get that out. It's been very reliable um, and, a, and a good source to a lot of our customers. We've got managed Wi-Fi. Um, we still publish a directory. So I know there's a lot of people that don't use a directory. They use their Internet if they've got a good Internet source. Or you can get your cell phone and call, hey, Siri, look up or give me this number. Uh, but we still publish a directory. Our new one just came out um, early December and is still dropping to our customers right now. So who do we serve? Um, we serve parts, as I mentioned, through eight counties in rural central North Carolina. Alamance, Chatham, Davidson, Guilford, Lee, Moore, Montgomery, and Randolph. And I'll say it again, it's parts of eight counties. Um, you'll see in a minute I have a map for Chatham so you can see where we're actually at as it affects you. So that's why you're here. Um, and then as I show there, we have our headquarters. It's in Ashburn. And we do have an office in Liberty um, as well. We have over 10,900 customers that are co-op customers and 534 square miles of co-op territory. Um, and our CLEC, which is our non-members, we serve over 1,600 of those customers, which is 137 square miles and growing. Um, that does include a grant that I'll briefly mention in just a few minutes that we are doing in Moore County. So how do you sign up for our services? Um, we created a website, myrandolphfiber.net, in 2016 to help manage uh, the high demand uh, for our Internet services. Uh, you can go to this website, which is basically like crowdsourcing, um, if fiber is available, it will send you to an application and you can sign up right there. If it's not available, it's going to give you an interest form. That information comes to me and my team. It plots it on it. We'll plot your address for us on a map and we can see those high concentrated areas of interest. So as we are looking for future areas to grow out uh, to our services or, hey, we've got this area and it may be a mile long, but there's 25 people right there, you know, it, you can make a good business case for that then we, can, we utilize this source for everything that we do, setting our budget, looking at grant funding, and so forth. But once this area, once it's received, uh, say we get an interest on this, and I want to make sure I'm clear when we're saying how, how do you get it. Um, and it takes champions in areas, too. I know I see a couple of champions in some areas and communities um, around, but these folks create their own websites. It, it takes that because, you know, like I said, we're a lean team. I've got four on my team. Um, so we can't go out to all these eight counties and be there. It's just not feasible. So these folks will go into the communities, see, are, are you even interested in this service? If you are, let them know that you're interested, and then that gets you on our, on our radar, so to speak. 
Um, so we look at an average of one customer per every thousand feet. That's an average. So if you got 5,280 feet in a mile, you got five customers in a mile, say, okay, we've got five interests. That's great. You've met that interest area. But there's a lot of other variables that go into saying we're putting you on our schedule and we can get your area in our budget. Um, scheduling is a big thing because you have to schedule far in advance to get the crews, Chad and his crews. You've got to get the materials, which the supply chain right now is out of this world and the backlog on fiber and vaults and all this other stuff just in our world. Um, and you know it when you try to order stuff and Christmas presents and so forth. So there's that's a struggle, and, and we're trying to do the best we can and plan ahead for that. And we've done pretty well with that so far, but we will probably feel the pressure like everyone else is feeling at some point. Um, the crew availability, as I mentioned, the supplies, budget. Uh, we're a nonprofit. We're governed by our members, and we've got a board of directors. So we set that, and we operate within a budget every year. So even if you meet that rule of thumb, an average of one customer for every 1,000 foot, that doesn't mean we, we can actually put you on the map because it's not just one area. We've got parts of eight different counties and around those counties, really, besides of our co-op area that's trying to do the same thing that everybody else is doing. So we've got lists um, who can make the best business case. We also, that's very important to us, is what helps our network the most, making sure we've got redundancy. So if an area goes down, we can bring it down and our customers don't go down. So that's important when we're looking at future growth as well. Um, it's very expensive to put in. Your people ask, well, how, how expensive is it? it? It's very expensive to deploy fiber. Um, different providers put fiber in at different depths. Our rule of thumb is we put it in about 18 inches deep. Once we put it in, on drops, thank you. Main line, three foot. So we want, well, once we get into the ground, we try to prevent a lot of people, if they don't call 811, if you're going to dig in your garden or dig a post, you can destroy that fiber or somebody else's fiber. You might not just put your neighbor out, you might put the whole area out. So calling 811 is very important when you're, when you're doing something in your yard or around. Um, but we, we set that and we pride ourselves in how we put our fiber in so we can avoid any cuts and damages to keep our customers up. Um, just to put a number on it, because I know that's probably going out there, it's about $44,000 for one mile to put fiber in. That's a minimum. That's easy plowing. Um, if you've got a bore under a creek or a river, um, rock, Oh, don't say rock. Yeah. Railroads is another thing. Permitting, easements. Uh, railroads want you to pay every year. Even though you cross them, you get under there one time, you still, we still have to pay them every year for that crossing. So there is a lot of factors. It's not as cut and dry as I'm going to pay you this or get it here and there. But um, that's our goal and that's what we want to do. Um, let me see. Also, just when we um, when COVID hit, we put hot Wi-Fi hotspots. We put free Wi-Fi hotspots up in seven different areas too. Uh, one in Chatham County is the Silk Hope Rotan Club. So if you are not fortunate enough to have the adequate internet right now, uh, I know a lot of people have taken advantage. They've gone and sat there with their kids to try to help up, upload documents or stuff for school. Um, that's free. Um, if you need more information about that, let me know, or you can contact somebody from the Rural Tan Club. But um, there's things around that might be a resource for now. So our network, copper versus fiber. So which is better? By far, fiber is the future-proof technology um, that will allow for more reliable, robust connection. Um, terrain, weather, equipment all play a role in your connection um, to a satellite or um, to wireless. Fiber is the best technology, of course, in our opinion. <laughs> Sorry, Kate. Um, available, and we'll provide gig capable symmetrical services. If you can't get it, that's a good solution to look at. Um, because, as we go back to it, it's a necessity. You've got to have it. You've got to have it to, to do everything right now. Um, we design our fiber network to meet future needs, our current, but also future needs. We try to put in uh, big enough fiber uh, down the road to, to look. You know, Silk Hope is a prime example from something we've moved out. It was started small, but uh, it has blossomed. A lot of people from Apex Chatham Park has had a lot of folks coming in there, too. So we try to make um, it readily available to what we think 
might need to be done because we don't want to do it again once we put it in there. Our current network uh, for Randolph Communications and RTTI, which is our CLEC, as I mentioned earlier, it's fiber and copper. Our CLEC area is all fiber, and some of our copper is still, uh, still some of our lake is still copper. Um, we've invested over $62 million self-funded in our fiber plant over 23 years, so we've been averaging about $2.7 million a year putting fiber in. And as I stated earlier, we're 90% 90 complete with that. Um, our voice services, we utilize a, a switch location in Coal Ridge, and all cent nine central uh, office locations are connected by, via a fiber ring, and we can upgrade that ring at any time. Our broadband services are operated by the core and edge routers, and we, le we lease Internet backhaul consisting of 100 gig connections to reach main Internet pops. Um, so we, like I said, there's always something that can happen, but we try to, try to prepare what we can. Different things that we've done in the communities. In 2018, we answered a call out in Silk Coat. Um, they got a petition at the store. It started with 200 and some names that they were desperate to come out here. We held two community meetings out there at the Rural Town Club. And through the fall of 21, we have plowed over 75 miles in Silk Coat. So it didn't stop there. We have been busy. That's probably been our busiest um, CLEC area since then. Um, so we're in Chatham County. We're here to stay. We, we don't, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we just want to continue to help folks in the rural areas. Uh, Lee County, we partnered with them um, for their EDC group. They had an um, uh, enterprise park down there that they needed fiber, so we partnered with them. And um, we also received in 2020, uh, we've talked about funding, we received $2.3 million grant from USDA. Um, that was for Moore County. We did look at parts of Chatham County uh, for the USDA grant. We did look at, um, for the great grant that's state funding uh, a couple years ago, we looked at Chatham County in Ardolph, uh, the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund that came in. And there's a lot of rules and regulations when you start applying for funding. And that's not as easy as, hey, you, you hear it, they've got these millions and billions of dollars coming down, so why won't these providers put the fiber in and give us the Internet service that we desperately need? Well, when they put that... They sort of tie your hands at times when they say year, a couple of years ago it was a 25-3 connection. Well, based on FCC data, a lot of areas could get it based on census blocks, so that would throw it out. So they are working. They're seeing that, that a lot of that information was incorrect. So they're um, re allowing providers more flexibility, I guess, in order to um, seek grant funding. Let me see what else. In that grant, it was a total of $3 million, and we're matching $767,000 of that. So we're continuing to self-fund our efforts. So where are we at in Chatham County? So if you look at this map, the yellow areas um, is our member areas. That's our co-op. The red areas for today is our CLEC areas, where we have already expanded into. We just finished up a big project um, down Buckner Clark, uh, across 64, Hadley Mill, Pleasant Hill Church Road. Put a switch site down there so we could um, regenerate that light, and then we've got it for future growth as well. Um, but that, I just wanted to show that. That shows you, you know, you may say, well, I live here and I'm not anywhere close. I never say never. Um, there's a lot of, we didn't think we'd be in areas that we are right now. We didn't think we'd be in Lee County but opportunities come up. There is a lot of funding that's out there right now, and we are looking at that for Chatham County and for the other counties. But um, we know that there's a lot of rural areas in Chatham County, so it's one of the top of our list when we're looking for funding. Any questions on that while I'm on the map? The high schools, the county has a contract um, with a company that has uh, transport fiber, so there might be areas like this lady was talking about that there is fiber in front of the house, but they can't tap into it, and that's called transport fiber. So the, all the schools in Chatham County are connected uh, by one provider that won the, con won the bid with the county. <laughs> but well, what's next? So we're currently in the process of applying for a US, another USDA grant, and I can't disclose the locations yet because we've not finalized everything, but the largest part of the grant is in Chatham County. Um, it, it's different areas. In looking at that, it goes back to, as I said, to the regulations and the guidelines. Do can Are they claiming they can already provide a gig service, but yet they can't? 
Uh, if we submit an application, is it going to pop it out because they say that they can provide it even though data shows that there's not FCC or uh, USDA, whoever's reviewing the grants. So there's a lot of legwork that we have to do to justify that. We applied in 2019 for a USDA grant and didn't get it. Um, we went door to door. We validated. We had surveys. We had interviews. We had everything, and we still didn't get it. And they told us fiber's there, and we could. We told them we will take you out there and show you that that is not fiber. It's transport fiber. Everything we talked about, and we didn't get it. Luckily, through the CARES Act, they opened up additional funding the next year. We resubmitted, and we did get that grant. So there's, they've taken out a lot of, you know, red tape. There's still red tape when you're dealing with federal funding. Um, Right now, they're saying that insufficient broadband, if underserved, is um, 100 by 20. That opens up a lot. Unserved is 25.3. Years ago, it was 25.3. A lot of providers could say they could provide a 25.3. To get 100 by 20, you've got to have pretty robust fiber or services, fixed wireless or whatever it is. Basically, the last slide is that we're continuing to, to, re to search for ways that we can help Chatham County these rural areas. We've got great partnerships with Chatham County officials. We've got projects underway right now putting fiber in for Chatham County. Um, we've got a grant that we're hoping that we're successful for uh, that we probably will not hear for, from until the end of the year. There's great grant state funding that's coming out. We hope to hear from that maybe by this month, next month, um, that would open up other possibilities. There's, as it was mentioned about, there's ARPA funding that's coming out, the digital inclusion, everything that was signed to the legislature. It's great what you guys are doing. Uh, we're part of the Randolph County digital inclusion, the Moore County, and, and so forth. So those are other funds that's going to come down. So if it's not in one grant, we're hoping to pick up things and others that it qualifies for.